beautiful people hello beautiful darlings welcome back to my channel my name is Baba Lucy Bay a South African booktuber and today we are doing a book reading update of my 2020 reading goal earlier on this year I set a goal I told myself I have to admit to read um, 40 books by the end of 2020 and 2020 just turned out to be one heck of a year. Um, I just at least got to half of my goal. And thanks to Scribed, which helped me with the audiobooks, because um, when I was on the road, at least I listened to some of the books. And that at least, you know, elevated my... Um, my list of the books to read this year so without wasting any time let's talk about these books that i have read i hope i won't take long but let's do this so this is not in order i'll just i just stack my books in front of me and i'll just keep on you know taking one by one from top to bottom so the first book on the list is um, Nicolette Machile's What's Your Move? We did a review of this book with my book club and the link is on the description. Nicolette Machile is just um, helping us with financial jargon. Um, she is not a financial advisor but she shares with us her experiences with money um which includes um her failures and her successes with money so this is quite um a good book you know to enlighten you to make you aware of what goes on when for example you buy a house and or you buy a car you know the language um agents and sales people use to capture you so to say to buy these things um i would recommend that you get this um although she writes this from a point of privilege but some of the lessons and the advices are very good to implement on our daily um financial decisions um my second book is i have a fly in the house and it's so irritating my second book is The Keeper of the Croom by Sylvia Vollenhoven. I loved, loved this book. Um, Sylvia Vollenhoven um, is a journalist, a writer, and um, she has experienced so much that we have this book. She is a colored and she just basically shares with us um, her challenges being a colored person in South Africa and how she avoided her calling and what that calling did for her when she finally accepted to listen to it and follow through, you know, um, what this guy did for her and her struggles in general working during the past eight era as a colored person. Without wasting any time, let me move on to another book. And this one is Black Text, Burden or Ubuntu. So it's a book written by a collective of authors who share their backgrounds and their definition and experiences when it comes to black text other people argue that black text is a burden so black text is money um i'll say money that we share with our families our friends our community and some people call it a burden if you know it comes from a point of guilt you know and ubuntu if it's like it comes from a point of um willingness uh, i don't know if i explained that correctly but yeah black text 
text from our black community you know when you start working and um already your money doesn't go to you but to your family and your extended family and your friends and even that car ride to church or after church then you have to drop people off you know even if you don't want it but you have to do it because your mom said you must do it um so i i'm not gonna explain too much but this is the book i read and i loved it because some of the stories were so relatable some of the things i experienced myself and it's a conversation starter this one and a conversation that will go a long way because it's a fairly new concept so it's still going to go a long way so yeah yes, i still need to do a review of this book i love this book because it's so funny and <laughs> okay it's kaya zangas these things really these things do happen to me i love this book and i'm going to review it i promise i should have reviewed this book a long time ago i don't know what's happening with me you know and um i think i'm thinking too much about reviewing this book that i end up not reviewing it but kaya Zanga's book is just um a collection of stories that happened in his life that he thinks um people will be like uh really did that really happen to you you know so i really really like this book and i'm going to review it for you so that you can buy it and um laugh at these stories because they are really funny and um they are so relatable in so many ways and i really um I did say, you know, when I got this book, I wanted to know what Kaya Zanga was all about because in the beginning I was like, mm, this guy. But when you read the book, you sort of get um, where this um, character Kaya Zanga comes from. And I have to be honest with you, this book um, dragged so long for me. You know, it took so, it took me a long time to finish and it's to do busani do this zulu wedding i don't like this book as much as i like other to do busani do this books and um so just a summary of the book it's a young girl who was born and raised in south africa her parents are from well her father is from lesotho and her mother is from is it key that and but anyways so her parents were not supposed to get married and so when they did um the family where the mother was supposed to marry into said okay no if you have a child then that child should get married here and so this girl Lungile um is avoiding this thing that she's um supposed to to do which is getting married to uh, a Zulu king and so she falls in love she goes to pursue her dancing career in America falls in love with an American guy they are supposed to get married but now she has to fix this thing back at home and when she gets back at home now I think she falls in love with the king um, so that's basically the book in a nutshell it's not a bad book i just didn't enjoy it i didn't like it it just took long for me to finish but the trailer of the movie looks really interesting and i would really like to watch the movie maybe i will enjoy it more than i enjoyed the book and then my other book i loved 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 this book um it's nervous conditions by Titi Dangarangba. I loved this is this falls under my top 10 books of my 2020 reads I really loved this book and uh, because the characters still linger to this day on me and um, you know I can't I can't stop thinking about them I can't stop um, imagining um, certain things that happened, you know, and if I see a situation, 
I could relate it to some of the events in this book. So this book is basically following a young girl, um, Tambu Zai, who is very determined to finish school and um, in the beginning she says that she hates her brother, or she's not sorry that her, her that her brother died, and so we learn why that is so. She sort of achieves what she sets her mind to, but the characters that developed in this book and that were shared, um, I really fell in love with them. Her father, who irritated me so much, her mother. Her aunt, her uncle, who was like the god in the family, her cousin, um, what's her name? I forgot her name, but I really felt so close to that character. Um, so yeah, this book I really loved. You must check out the, the review of this book. I'll add the review on the description. Anyways, love this book. And, oh, I'm so embarrassed. This book is so dirty. Okay, uh, it doesn't have the cover, but um, it's We Walked the Sky by Lisa Fiddler. I loved, loved this book. This was also one of my favorite books of 2020. Uh, I love this book, guys. I won this book from Biden Books. And when I read it, I just couldn't stop reading it. It follows a young girl who ran away from home. She was basically running away from her abusive father, you know? And so she ended up um, in a circus where she became a tightrope walker and fell in love. The love just like ended in a way, it didn't end actually because the boyfriend died. But it was, I think this is a spoiler, but the boyfriend died and they had a child that the boyfriend didn't know about, you know. Um, uh, it's a sad and love horrible story. It's a love story and I love it so much. And um, I also have a review of this book, which I really, really loved so much. So yeah, We Walk the Sky by Lisa Fildler. Another favorite book of mine, which also falls into my top 10 reads of 2020, um, I Choose to Leave by Letejo Zulu. Oh my goodness, guys. This book is everything. Um, although it's triggering for some people, you know, because the way in which Letejo writes is so beautiful, yet so, so descriptive that you will literally cry reading this book. So Little Ho is just basically sharing with us the loss of her husband when they were summiting Mount Kilimanjaro. Gugu Zulu was a well-known racer in South Africa. Everyone loved him. My father loved him. And when I told him how he died, he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so relieved because I thought this guy had fallen from the mountain. Um, but yeah, she shares the story. It's such a beautiful story. I love it. I love this book. It's a book of hope. It's a book of courage. And it's a book to say that it's okay to move on. It's okay to move on after you have healed. And um, the healing process is different for all of us. You may heal in two days and I may take 10 years to heal. But what's important is that you, you mustn't judge me for healing in two days and wanting to move on you know um it's such a beautiful book i love it i love it so much i feel like these are the books i loved this year that i'm just telling you about guys this is um lovely war by julie berry oh i love this book this book is so beautiful this book is a love story between um in two couples um, I forgot their names because I do sometimes forget these things. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> so this is like a love story that is controlled by 
the gods and the goddesses of the universe. So we have the god of love, the god of war, the god of this and that. And all these people are just um, controlling the events that unfold in these characters' lives. So Aphrodite is the one that just wants to show these gods that, you know, love is such a beautiful thing. And um, this is how I manage to, to play my part in giving people a really nice experience of love. So this is such a beautiful book. And I really, 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 really loved it. Lovely Walk by Julie Berry. Now, Lady His Love. Um, I like this book, but I don't love it as much as I love Shlomo with the Wife. And I know, you guys, if you read Shlomo with the Wife, you know Shlomo with the Wife is like, <sighs> she's like the cherry on top. Um, but this is, the third book of the Shomu series, My Lady His Love, which follows a love story between a Zulu brother and My Lady, who is a doctor, a medical doctor. And she works in a psychiatric hospital in Kimberley. And so they meet and they don't fall in love instantly, but the guy falls in love and he pursues this lady who eventually falls in love and, you know, can't live without this man of hands, who is Kawe Zulu. Let me tell you something about Kawe. Kawe Kichama. Kawe, um, in the beginning, I was like, oh my goodness. Kawe, please don't do this to me because I really love him, Kaile. And now, so when you're doing this to me, I feel like I am just betraying him, Kaile, because, oh my goodness, these Zulu brothers are just, so romantic and so loving and very stubborn <laughs> but this is a beautiful love story I just didn't like the grammatical errors but I know that Didi Busani um, now printed um, new editions of the film series which I believe she corrected the grammatical errors so maybe when you go buy the book you'll get it um, very nice she also um changed the covers so the covers look um consistent and they i think they look nice on the bookshelves as well so yeah my lady his love a beautiful love story between a doctor and a zulu brother uh, <laughs> this book I am so <laughs> I am so in awe because I like this book. Um I was given this book by um Umpile from Bugamoso and Ofense Muduga who are both um booktubers and very active bookstagrammers. Um, so they did a giveaway and I managed to win these books and Coconut, Coconut Kelsey's Guide to Surviving the Shithole was pretty much one of the books I got from the giveaway. So, Lissiho Tabi, the author, writes this book in... Coconut Kelsey's voice. Coconut Kels is this girl who wants to, who is transitioning to become a white person. So she says she is white inside but black on the outside but she is fixing that because she's bleaching and you know she's got her wig on. Her wig actually, she doesn't want that situation where when her white foot touches her wig it falls off. She wants the boot to think that the hair is real. And so um, she is just giving you a guide on how to transition to a white woman from a black woman and the things you're supposed to do. For example, how you can be, um, she calls it, uh, oh, I forgot now, I forgot now, but um, she describes it, um, you know, how you can be, 
a nice racist in a way <laughs> and how you can get away with a lot of racist shit in South Africa and what to do and what not to do she continues to say and call black people Skivenga, um, who are thieves and this is basically calling black people the names that black people don't want to be called and she uses it in such a um, a humorous way but she also touches on very important issues um, that affect us racially in South Africa and how she does it is funny but it hits hard. I remember when I started reading the face page I mean the first chapter and I was reading it out loud to my husband who said I don't like this book and I had to explain to him that no just listen listen what um, Kels is saying just give her a chance and he did eventually get what she was trying to say this was a clever way of um, telling us what is in South Africa racially and so um, I like this book I really do and um, I know a lot of people um, were triggered by this book but I also know a lot of people who are who really want to be accepted by white people and it's sad when you do it in coconut Kelsey's way of doing things. I'll leave it here. Another book I read is The Undying Spirit of a Woman by Mbalente Ulu. I didn't like this book. I won't lie, I didn't like this book. This is a collection of poems and I didn't finish this book. I felt like this book was rushed. This is a woman who, um, she's basically trying to give women hope and shares, you know, poems that um, are very devotional. But... I didn't like how it was done. I didn't like how it was written. I didn't like um, the repetition of the poems in the book. Uh, I didn't like it at all. I feel like when you have an idea and you feel like it's a good idea, don't rush it. You know, don't rush it. Um, it's a sad book. And I'm just wondering what the the first and second book are like if this one is like this and my um, I lost count now um, this is The Spy by Paolo Coelho and this book I'll be honest took such a long time for me to finish and not because it's not a good book it's a good book and it's really interesting that it's um, a true story of this lady, Matahari. Um, but it took so long for me to finish for some reason. Anyway, so this is a book that follows Matahari. Matahari is not her real name, but um, she was arrested for being a spy. And uh, she got herself into... into so many so many troubles so I guess what this book is trying to tell us is in the beginning Matahari is being killed she's executed because obviously she was a spy and so her verdict was death and so we are just trying this book is just basically telling us why she was killed it's it's done in such a way that she is writing letter a letter to her lawyer who she wants the letter to eventually go to her daughter if she's going to die. But if she wasn't going to be killed, she wasn't going to 
give this letter to the lawyer or her child and i don't know if she was going to continue living her life because she was like a a slave queen matahari was basically having relationships and sleeping with these powerful men so that she could maintain a lavish lifestyle which she loved and she was a dancer an erotic dancer if, if you may um that's how she became famous so this is just a book to let us know what led to matahari's death good book and another book that falls under my 10 favorite books of 2020 is The Pavement Bookworm by Pilani Jada. Oh my god, people, I am going to do a review on this book. And so I'm not going to say a lot. Just wait for the review of this book and then I will tell you about it. But this is basically a book written by someone who was homeless and homeless because of the stupid choices he made in life and so i'll just leave it there because i will give you a review on it um my other book is bear the blesses game by jackie pamuzi um guys this book i love this book and love it more because i had a conversation with jackie um, the link is on the description. I loved that conversation with Jakey because we really, uh, we spoke about this book and it was so beautiful. I really loved that conversation. Um, this book is um, a true life story following Treasure's life who is Jakey Pamuzi. Um, she basically shares with us her life from just being an innocent girl to ending up being in a relationship with a married man who was a blesser who paid for everything she had and the dirty things that happened and this fly is here again irritating me once more but anyways this is such a good book a really really well written book and um, a book to create awareness of the things, dirty things that happened um, in South Africa and the world at large by, um, done by dirty men who use young girls for their sexual fantasies and so many dirty things, man. I'm getting so angry just thinking about the things that these men do to young girls. I'm, I'm so angry at us young women who really want to, who really sell ourselves for a nice life that we can create ourselves. Of course, it takes longer, but it's possible and it can happen. We don't need blessers. And um, you can say as many things as you want, but um, at the end of the day, it's a choice that one makes. But this book will open your eyes to the shit things that blessers do to young girls who are very vulnerable and they just want to look nice on Instagram. And I don't know, get some validation of some sort, I don't know, but yeah this book is close to my heart the link of the conversation as i said is on the description another one of my favorite is touch my blood by fred kumalo this one reminds me of marina um every time i look at this book i remember marina from young gifted and black she's the reason i have this book because when she reviewed it her smile was so contagious and I will always share this. <laughs> um, so there is a a link to this book's review on the description. But this is basically Fred Kumalo's Elias of Life. And he bears it all. And I really love it. It's so funny and sad at the same time. I really, really love this book. 
and one of my favorite books is this one this book was a favorite of mine before I even read it and um, it's always sold out that's how good the book is when hope whispers by Zuleka Mandela Zuleka Mandela also bears it all she she's not shy to tell you what happened in her life and I really love books like this because what do you judge hmm? because people judge on things they don't know you know this and it's out there it's for you to appreciate that this person is telling you what happened in her life and how she overcame some of the very challenging things that happened. Um, I really, really love this book. This is an all-time favorite book and one of the books that will make it to my top 10 list of 2020. Um, so I really love Zuleka Mandela. I follow her on social media and I stalk her all the time. I really love her. Um, this is how she survived her cancer, breast cancer. And this is how she shares with you what happened when she lost her children and how she dealt with it. The drug addiction and how she overcame that. So this is quite... A beautiful book very beautiful well written and um, like this is like a diary of Zalega Mandela a book to have another book I listen to now I'm talking about my audiobooks because I don't have physical copies but I read The Strange Library um, I forgot the author but I will put pictures of those books I listen to I really loved that book. It's such a short book. Someone said it was a snack and I promise you it's a snack. I loved that book. So quick. Um, I listened to it while I was jogging and I was done listening to it. Um, another book is um, What People Do Before Breakfast. Uh, you know, I'm going to butcher the titles of these books, but that's fine. Um, I will put them on the screen. And um, I like that book. It's, it's also a quick book and a book to just give you a guide on what you can do in the mornings, you know, so that your mornings are productive and they set a mood for the day ahead. Uh, another book I listened to is Oprah Winfrey's um, What I Know For Sure. I love that book and I know I'm going to own a copy because it's close to my heart and I love the stories, I love the validations, I love the stories she shared and I just love that, you know, she, as an experienced and mature person now with with different experiences, different experiences, she will just guide you on how to take life as is and just appreciate the present moment, you know. I um, really love that book. Another book um, I listened to was Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's um, We Should All Be Feminists and another one which was a letter to her friend who just had a child and she was just basically asking Chimamanda how she could raise her child as a feminist. I will put both the books on the screen. Um, so We Should All Be Feminists um i would recommend that everyone listens to this i've been meaning to um get my husband to listen to this um audio because it's such a beautiful book i love it i love her perspective i also love the perspective of the letter they are so similar to one another so um yeah i love those books another book i listened to is um the alchemist uh, I, I read The Alchemist when I was young and you know I didn't I didn't read it with the mind or the mindset I have now so listening to the book being narrated was so beautiful and I I sort of know why people love that book because that's like a validation of some sort a book that will say you know what if you want to pursue something go for it you know don't doubt yourself of course doubt will come but if you know what you want to achieve 
go for it and you will achieve and know that there are challenges along the way but when you know what your vision is just go for it so that's basically why people love that book because it's a validation to say that yes do it you can do it and you can achieve it as long as you know and as long as the universe conspires to helping you achieve it then you can do it um another book was um the the girl with the lower back tattoo by amy schumer i really 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 loved that book and i would recommend that you listen to it or you read it um buy a copy and read it it's such a well-written book such um um, I don't know, it's like those radio those radio stories that you listen to and you just can't wait for the next day to listen to the continuation. That book is so contagious, that book is so funny and that book touches on really, really important subjects about sexual abuse and physical abuse and the way in which she narrates that book is so beautiful and yeah man i really loved that book i loved it so much um what other book did i listen to mm. i think those are basically the books i listened to to finish off this video thank you guys for watching my update of the year i i feel so proud actually just telling you about these books that i've read this year i feel like i have achieved you know even if i don't get to 40 which i really would love to get to I have achieved as a book reader despite all the challenges that happened this year. I appreciated all the moments I had with my books, the ones that I didn't like <laughs> and the ones I really really loved. So thank you for watching this video. Quite a proud moment actually just thinking about this journey with books this year. I will leave it here. Thank you again for watching. I will see you on my next video. Bye.